iPads are funny old devices. They can be a multi-purpose productivity machine or a $1,200 YouTube viewer. Today, I wanna to fix that. I'm gonna show you a bunch of apps that actually make the iPad useful. The ones that help you plan your day, think clearly and wind down in the best possible way. If your iPad currently lives on the sofa and only wakes up for Netflix, this one's for you. First up, if you're still using Apple's Mail app, I think you're missing out. My absolute goat when it comes to email is Spark Mail, which I've been a subscriber for for years, and I just wouldn't live without it. You can connect all your different mail accounts to it and then view all your emails together or filter by address. It's got some great AI features, including an assistant to help you find what you want, far quicker than search, plus some great templates that will also use AI to customize your response to any messages you constantly have to send out. But the best thing, is their gatekeeper feature. This is like call screening, but for email. Any new senders get sorted out and you can either accept them into your email world or block them forever. I can get my emails done so much faster with this one rather than getting lost for hours in my inbox. Next up, a quick shout out from this week's sponsor before we get into some of the other apps. If you've never used time blocking before, this is probably the easiest way to start. And here's how it works. Everything I need to do lands in one space. Emails from Gmail show up as tasks. Slack messages from clients can become tasks. Notes that I create in other spaces will also appear here too. This all flows into the universal inbox, which saves me from bouncing between six different apps as I'm trying to work out what to get done today. Now, once everything is in the inbox, I just drag each task straight into my calendar. You can kind of see the shape of your whole day in one view, not a list that lives in a fantasy world that may or may not end up getting done. The AkiFlow AI Copilot is really clever too. It learns your habits over time. So last week it suggested putting my editing session after lunch because it knows that's when I normally do it. You can also ask it to build a full morning ritual for you. Mine includes writing, emails, and a spin class. I also like to check the stats page at the end of every week. It shows me how many hours I actually spent on client work or admin, editing, or filming. Now, if you want to try out AkiFlow for yourself, use my link in the description. You also get a free one-to-one -one onboarding call, which makes it so much easier to set up your own workflow in a way that works just for you. A big thanks again to the team at AkiFlow for sponsoring this one. Next up we have Craft and if you've been watching the channel for a while you'll know this is one of my absolute favorites. Craft is like the opposite of Notion. It's a second brain app where you can keep all your important notes and ideas, whiteboards, you name it. But it's not something that's going to take you days and days to set up or learn to use. It also looks utterly gorgeous on iPad. Clean and minimal without being cluttered. Especially when I've got some writing to do, I just need zero distraction. So I can enter focus mode like this with one tap and then just get on with my next masterpiece knowing that I'm not going to fall down any procrastination rabbit holes. Yeah, I just can't say enough good things about this app. I've made a bunch of videos about it so far this year. Go check them out if you want to see more. Next, we have Screens 5, and this one kind of blew my mind when I first set it up. I recently added an M4 Mac Mini to my setup, and whilst I do love my iPad, there are just occasions when you need a Mac to work on for all kinds of reasons. Well, this one takes a bit of setting up, but Screens 5 now lets me remotely connect to that Mac Mini from anywhere in the world. And I can't just see what's going on, I can actually control it. That is full-blown Mac OS running here on my iPad. You get barely any lag. It's absolutely phenomenal. The only downside is that it does give you a taste of what life would be like if you actually had Mac OS running natively on an iPad, which it doesn't do. Maybe one day, eh? So whilst I do like staying productive, iPad is great for a spot of downtime, whether that's watching videos or having a good old doom scroll. And what better app to do that on than Instagram, which came to the iPad natively for the first time this year, even though not many people still seem to know. At its core, Instagram is such a visual experience. It's so cool to be able to see some of those pictures, especially on this big, glossy iPad screen. Check out my buddy Malcolm here with his wildlife pics. They look absolutely gorgeous. It's also far easier to reply to messages on Instagram on an iPad compared to some other devices. So if you're over on that platform, come and say hi. Next is another one from Meta. And someone told me the other day that we're a bit unusual in the UK, that many people don't send messages using the stock messaging app anymore and prefer to send messages using WhatsApp instead. Is that true for any other countries? I'm sure any US viewers will definitely tell me. Anyway, WhatsApp is definitely king for me when it comes to group texts, chatting with clients, and also brands 
that I'm working with. And again, it's far easier to manage when I'm on iPad. Next, we have my podcast app of choice. If I'm working, doing chores, walking around, or pretty much anything that isn't talking to a camera, you can bet I'm listening to a podcast. And Apple's podcast app just isn't for me. So I pay for this one, which is much better and mainly for one key reason. So Castro works like a DJ. So you subscribe to your shows and then as new episodes arrive, you just add them into a queue in the order that you want to listen to them, which in my case is often very different to the order they get published in. If you don't fancy an episode, you just don't add it to your queue. It syncs to my iPhone too, so I'm always up to date with where I'm at with each episode. But please though, do not tell me about any podcast that I should start listening to as I already subscribe to over a hundred different shows. It's too many. Now, this next one might be a bit of a surprise because even though I do a pretty creative job for a living, I never really saw myself as artistic until recently when I downloaded the Lake Coloring app. This is a relaxation app that's designed to support focus, reduce anxiety and enhance creativity. You can pick from tons of different designs and you can then colour in with acrylic, airbrush, spray, pencils or markers. Even the colour picker is insanely relaxing to use. They've got a team of over 120 artists who produce the drawing, so there's no AI slop here. It is a paid app though, about $30 a year, but considering the money goes towards supporting the artists and you do get a week free to try it out, I think it's a really good investment in your mental health. I reckon if you're going to lose an hour or so to an app, you might as well make it this one. Next, we go from the very zen vibes of colouring to a more traditional way to let off steam, and it's a spot of gaming. Now, I'm a PlayStation gamer normally, but Sony's own gaming app is absolutely awful, so I prefer to use the PX Play app, which gives me a remote or local connection to my PS5, as well as up to 4K upscaling on the stream, plus up to 60 frames a second, and spatial audio when I plug my AirPods in. Now, Sony's own app barely managed 20 frames a second, and 720p when I tried it so this is a massive improvement in the experience whenever I'm gaming on the go. And finally this is the only official Apple iPad app in the list. It's the Fitness or Fitness Plus app. They've got some great classes in here especially the hit and spinning classes and I usually just hook it up to my bike here and then get into it. Now the cool side benefit is that I keep discovering new music that I like which I can then go and check out over in the Apple Music app. I'm on a big mission to improve my fitness in 2026 and I know this app is going to help me get there because as I've discovered, I generally respond well to people shouting things like this at me. That bring that pop, pop, pop and see your life, my friend. I know, each to their own, eh? Well, folks, I hope you've discovered a few new apps to add to your iPad this year. Let me know which is your favourite and if there were any that I missed down in the comments. And if you want to know more about how I like to use my iPad day to day, just check this one out over here. See you next time.